Welcome back to my channel. Uh, as you can see, I'm here today with the father and the son, which probably makes me the Holy Ghost. Well, anyway, a while back uh, I made a video with uh, my dad, and he does uh, some uh, silver smithing. So uh, uh, I made some footage of uh, one of his project. He's making uh, a piece of jewelry we call uh, the folded ellipse. And uh, today we finished making part one, and uh, I'll show you the film, and uh, I'll let uh, my dad do the voiceover to explain what he's doing. I'm using a three millimeters square wire for this project, and uh, here I'm cleaning the end and filing, so I'm sure that you have 90 degrees angle. This is a tubing cutter jig, which is very useful to cut uh, tubing and uh, wire in a certain length. And uh, here I'm going to adjust for 85 millimeter. This is a mixture of uh, ethanol and uh, boric acid, uh, which I put on the surface of the rod, because this uh, protect the silver piece to have a fire scale when I'm uh, heating up it. Now I'm going to heat up this uh, piece because I'm going to anneal it. In other case, it's uh, very difficult to bend it to unring. But after inhaling, it's very soft and it's uh, quite easy. This is uh, the first step to make uh, a ring. So I have to bend it before I can uh, solder the ends together. Yeah, here I'm bending the wire and it's important to fit the ends together. Now it's uh, time for soldering the ring, and here I'm uh, putting flux on the surface before I'm cutting small pallions of solder. Small pallion, it's a small piece of solder, and here I'm uh, using hard soldering. Here I'm putting the pallion under the piece, and uh, that is the best way to solder this type of joints.
When you are soldering silver, it's uh, very important to heat the whole piece. And uh, in the end of the process, you, warm, you heat up uh, just the joint. And when you can see the solder is melting, it's done. And uh, after the soldering, we have to put uh, the piece in a pickle. Pickle, it's an uh, acidic solvent that's uh, used after soldering to remove flax and residue of oxides. In this case, I use uh, diluted sulfuric acid. <laughs> Now I'm go going to clean the piece with uh, soap and a brass brush. Now I'm going to make the piece real round and uh, for that purpose I use a ring rail and a rawhide hammer. Here I'm doing the final steps in the process to get a real round ring and I'm using a Rathbone ring stretcher in this case. And uh, here we are, a perfect round ring. So now I'm going to start making this perfect ring to an ellipse and for uh, that purpose I use a rolling mill. It's a, a Dustin 130 millimeter, millimeter combination rolling mill with uh, extension rollers and uh, gearbox. Now I am uh, adjust the distance between the two rollers. I have to put the piece uh, through the rolling mill many times to get it thinner and thinner each time. Now it's beginning to look like an ellipse. And uh, I'm going on to the thickness of the piece is 0.6 millimeters.
And uh, now I'm going to polish the piece. And uh, for this purpose I use 3M radial Bristol discs with uh, different grids. It's from uh, 80 grit to 1 micron. Now I'm going to put my hallmarks on the piece and uh, I'm putting my uh, own hallmark, it's PK and it's a registrated hallmark, you can see it in uh, Svedak and I also put a mark 925, it's sterling silver and uh, it's 92.5% silver and the rest is uh, copper. The third uh, hallmark is a year of manufacturing. I'm going to make a part of the surface rough and for that purpose I use a 60 grit uh, sanding paper. 